with the Yamaha YFZ450R and Raptor 700R retailing for over $10,000. A new sport ATV is a bit out of reach for many of us. With this in mind, we purchased a good running used Honda TRX 400EX at fair market value and set out to fix any issues and add the necessary parts to ensure durability out on the trail. In this video, we'll give you a rundown on our part selection, put the project build to the test, and give you a final breakdown on what it all cost. If you'd like to watch the build step by step, check out the entire build series. Restoring like new performance. To begin this project, we started by replacing anything that was worn or tweaked. We knew before receiving the machine that the subframe was bent. We ordered a used takeoff subframe from ATV Salvage Juggernaut Power Sports Nation. It arrived quickly, but was also tweaked. Power Sports Nation immediately swapped it out with another one. There was some scarring on the end of the grab bar from wheelies, but it was straight and that was completely acceptable to us for the money. We sandblasted it and gave it a fresh coat of primer and paint from the factory color matching experts at Colorite. With a small bend in the stock stem, we decided to upgrade it with a much stronger TIG welded 4130 chromoly anti-vibe steering stem from Texera Tech. Their products are manufactured in the United States of US sourced materials. Texera Tech sells their larger diameter TRX 450R steering stem for the 400EX adding additional strength. It requires the use of two TRX450R steering stem clamps and one bushing to work with the EX. Unique to Texera Tech stem, the area that's surrounded by the clamps is precision ground and heat treated for precise fitment and increased resistance to wear. The steering stem flag is lowered to reduce bump steer and gusseted for added strength. They can be ordered in plus one or plus two inch lengths. We went with a plus one and they can be powder coated a number of colors. Sold separately from their stem, Texeratex adjustable handlebar clamp and any vibe bar mount kit allow for different handlebar mounting positions in one quarter inch increments, moving the bars closer or further away. They're constructed of CNC billet aluminum and feature a black anodized finish. Texeratex also offers an adapter that will allow you to run their handlebar clamp with your stock stem for more adjustment at a lower price. Switching from the stock 7 8 inch diameter bar clamp to Texera Tech's 1 and an eighth inch adjustable bar clamp required a new handlebar. We could have used something less expensive, but Fast Company's Flex handlebars help reduce fatigue on long rides, especially with stock shocks. Their hinge design allows them to absorb impacts with different elastomers allowing for a firmer or softer feeling on compression and rebound. Preload screws allow you to fine tune their firmness and up sweep. Offering different bar heights and sweeps, no other handlebar company on the market is better at customer service before or after the sale. For this test, we rocked ours with the stock red elastomers, providing a relatively firm feeling unless the suspension starts to find its limits. To restore OEM braking feel and improve power, after a good bleeding, the brake pads were replaced with new pads from braking. Developed for off-road racing, braking's pads are more centered than the OEM pads for improved heat dissipation and bite. The rear brake return spring was not original to the machine, so we replaced it with a new OEM one. To help finish making the hand controls operate more smoothly and reliably, a new Motion Pro clutch and throttle cable were installed. We wrapped up the controls with a new set of OEM bolts and washers in the heel guards, replacing the zip ties that were holding them in place when we purchased the machine. Tightening up the chassis, we destroyed the stock bearing carrier, trying to remove the stock bearings without a press. We replaced it with a tusk axle bearing carrier from Rocky Mountain ATV. Test rider Evan Hartzell has used a Tusk Carrier in his personal race machine for an entire season, so it's already proven to be an acceptable, long-lasting, and affordable replacement. The play in the stock front ball joints was minimal enough that we left them alone for now. Sure, interlocking makes a replacement front ball joint kit that requires you to cut out the stock ball joints and weld in new ones. After installation, 
The front valve joints can then be removed and replaced in the future with no cutting or welding required. Sure, Interlocking's ball joint kit is far more affordable than purchasing new aftermarket A-arms. To keep our engine running strong for years to come, we installed a high-quality foam air filter from Muni. We then gave our 400 a fresh oil change with Maxima Pro Plus synthetic oil, offering the protection of the synthetic at a reasonable price. The stock 400EX tires had decent tread left, but with multiple plugs, we decided to switch them out for a full set of GBC tires. GBC XC Master and Groundbuster 3 tires already have a Pro GNCC Championship pedigree with Walker Fowler. We ran Groundbuster 3s out back, but opted for the standard version over the Pro model due to their more rounded profile putting a little less rubber on the ground, making the back end a little easier to break loose and slide with our 400's more limited power output compared to a larger displacement machine. For sizing, we ran 21 710's up front and 2011 9's rear. Improving Durability While our stock wheels were still in great shape, in the event of a flat, V-lock wheels would allow you to limp back to camp with the tire still fully mounted. We installed GPS Victory Lock 10-inch single beadlock wheels front, featuring a rolled inner lip for added strength. Out back, GPS 9-inch dual beadlock wheels offer an even higher level of added security. GPS wheels feature a dual bolt pattern, working on both Hondas and Yamahas. They're available with either carbon or aluminum beadlock rings, which we utilized. They're constructed of a specially heat-treated 6061 aircraft-grade aluminum with a 190 wall thickness on both halves of their beadlock wheels for added strength. This makes GPS Victory Lock wheels a little heavier, but they should hold up to years of mindless abuse. Next, we installed a four-piece skid plate set from Ricochet Off-Road to keep the underside of our A-arms frame and swing arm protected, made in the USA. They're constructed of 3 16-inch thick 5052H32 aluminum. The A-arm guards and frame skids are held in place by aluminum clamps with Torx fasteners used on the entire set. Their rounded edges help prevent snagging on trail obstacles. The swing arm skid plate's construction is especially gnarly, a good thing as it will take the most punishment. They're available in a bare aluminum finish like ours, or you can have them powder coated a number of colors to match your machine. A steering stabilizer is a mandatory upgrade for any sport quad to save both man and machine. They reduce rider fatigue and the chances of being knocked offline from uneven bumps or an obstacle trail side. Legendary for their high-end shock performance, PEP's stick-style steering stabilizer is surprisingly affordable compared to the puck-style dampers on the market. They offer some adjustability and are rebuildable. Racers use them for decades, and they still get the job done today. A new look. To wrap up this build, our machine needed a fresh look. We replaced the old dingy seat cover with a custom-made seat cover from Cosmic Quads. The red vinyl was a perfect match for the Honda's red bodywork. The styling and placement of the black 4-tracks and Honda logos were on point, providing the exact look we were after. If you want a seamless one-piece factory look, you can get that too, but you'll need to send Cosmic Quad your seat. Our 400EX plastic is completely crack-free, but after 20 years, it has its share of abrasions. A new graphics kit from FTR Power Sports covered nearly all of the plastic. Its fitment was perfection as usual, and FTR's thick vinyl and strong adhesive keeps their kits looking good for quite a while if you install them properly on clean plastic. We love its appearance. And with that, it's time to hit the trail. The test. What's up guys, Evan Hartz here with ATV On Demand. Today we're at my private cross country training track. Uh, today we're gonna be taking out our 400EX that we just redid. Uh, take it through the trails and see if we've built us a capable, long-lasting trail bike.
never riding a 400EX before really with any amount of seat time. I really enjoyed this bike. It's a pretty plush bike. Um, feels good, it rides good, it's got power. Uh, I really enjoyed it a lot. With the new stem and the new bars on this bike, it really felt good. You can sit down and be comfortable, you can stand up and be comfortable. Uh, with the flex bars, it's just a really good feel and takes the fatigue out of your hands, so it's a really nice setup. We threw a PEP stabilizer on this, and I've raced before without stabilizers, and uh, it's really just not fun. Uh, on this 400, we got the stick style stabilizer, and it really, it really helped uh, going through the trails and not grabbing the bar out of your hands. Stiffens up the feel. Uh, it takes a lot of the wrist fatigue out of it too. Uh, so overall, that was a really good investment. The power on this 400 is really nice. It's real smooth. It's not jerky like a 450 would be. Uh, you can kind of roll onto the power and ride in a higher gear. Uh, once you start short shifting it and going ripping through the trails, uh, it's really nice power and it's got a real nice delivery. The suspension on this 400 really surprised me. Uh, being an older shock and no reservoir, uh, is with just the adjustments on the bottom, it's really nice. It's not, it's not real harsh and not bottoming out everywhere like I thought it would be. Um, for a trail bike, it's really perfect. We ran the XC Masters by GBC on the front and the Ground Buster 3 on the rear. It's an awesome setup. It's what I personally race with. And I, I love this setup. It slides good. It uh, holds corners well. It's got good, a lot of good traction. It's a really solid setup. It's proven itself. And as you can see today on film, these tires hook up great. So we got the GPS bead locks on here, and they're a really nice setup. They got the dual lug pattern, so you can run them with Hondas or Yamahas or whatever bike you have, like us, we switch them around a lot. Um, with these on the rear, you got the dual bead lock, so you don't have to worry about your tire coming off if you get a flat. And on the front, you got the uh, single bead lock on the front. You don't have to worry about busting the bead off. We threw new brake pads on the 400, and it uh, just had really good stopping power. Stops you quick. As you guys can see, we tried to get over a pretty big log, and we weren't really worried about breaking our bike in half or denting up the frame or the A-arms because we had the Ricochet skid plates. Skid plates are a great investment when you're trail riding or even racing. Uh, you're not going to damage your frame, your A-arms, your, your swing arm. It's just another level of protection uh, to keep your bike looking fresh on the bottom. Ernie over at FTR did the graphics on this bike. Unfortunately, he passed away. Um, so we're hoping the company continues. I did see that his um, family posted that if you had a past kit made by him that they can reprint that. But he did an awesome job on these graphics. He's the best in the business. Uh, so it really gave this old 400EX a fresh look. Cosmic Quads did the seat cover on this 400. Uh, and looking at it, it's a really nice seat cover. It ties in the graphics really well and gives the bike a new look. Uh, installing this seat cover was really easy. Um, the lines line up great with the gas tank, and uh, it was just a really in easy installation. Uh, the lettering on the side looked really cool and retro and fit the graphics great. Final pricing. As we've mentioned, our 400EX purchase set us back $3,000. Replacing everything that was missing, bent, significantly worn, installing a name brand air filter and changing the oil set us back $1,849.13. We could have ordered a used stem and used the bars that came with our quad and saved around $600 on repairs. But our motto is typically don't replace it, upgrade it. Improving survivability with beadlock wheels, skid plates, a case saver, and a steering stabilizer added $1,360.25 to the build. These are items that we typically add to any new machine we'd purchased, 
so why not add them to a used machine that we want to keep around for years? Finally, we spent $325 on graphics and the seat cover. No, it wasn't necessary, but we wanted our 400EX to look cool. In the end, our project, quad, parts and all, set us back $6,534.38. We figure we could have had a good solid runner for around $5,000, but it wouldn't last as long or be as much fun to ride or look at. In the end, we wound up with a fun to ride, tough, trail ready machine for over $4,000 less than buying a brand new one. If you add skid plates, beadlock wheels and a steering stabilizer to a new machine, our affordable trail quad project would cost over $5,000 less. Best of all, this project started for $3,000, and if you shop carefully, you could find a 400 as nice as ours for even less money. Go buy one, build it up as your budget allows, and have a blast. After riding this 400 today, I can see why it was a popular choice back in the late 90s and early 2000s. After riding it all day and being a racer myself, it's really got me wondering how good can we actually make this 400. So we're going to throw some money at this thing, see how good we can actually get it and see if we can turn it into an in entry level race bike and uh, see how well it performs. Uh, if you want to see some more episodes, we're going to have more coming up, so subscribe to the channel and uh, stay tuned.